my dear friends it is said according to shiv mahapuran the 13th chapter once bhagwan shiva leaving kailash parvat to journey around the universe and devi parvati is seated very beautifully very very beautiful upon kailash she is chanting om namah shivaya and why she sits there in some hardi and she is praying she hears someone coming chanting narayan narayan who chants narayan anybody knows narad muni the son of brahma so beautifully narad muni sings narayan narayan chants in name of bhagwan hari and as he reaches to kailash he bows to the feet of nandishwara and nandishwara says to narad muni bhagwan shankar is not here he says that's okay if bhagwan shankar is not here i'm sure that mata parvati is here and in the absence of lord shiva she will treat me just as well he goes to parvati maya for those who are married one of your marriage vows it says to the dulahin if your husband isn't is at uh, upset at any time you are to treat your guests beyond reapproach or oh, you remember that vow jai bhagwan narad muni enters into kailash he sees devi parvati he falls to her feet pranam o maya and why is he bows to the feet of parvati maya even though narad muni heard from nandishwara that bhagwan shankar is not in kailash he still wants to hear from the devi what she has to say in the days world there are some people like that isn't that so for those who know about narad muni and his kathas you will always hear whenever you hear in narad muni problem does come after some time narad muni he goes there very beautifully he says maya where is bhagwan shankar parvati mata bole what does she say but she looks at narad muni she says oh narad bhagwan shankar has gone to roam the universe narad muni he looks at devi parvati and he says maya can i ask you one question and she says of course he says ma have you ever wondered why bhagwan shiva in a nataraj form he wears a mal of heads and skulls ma do you know whose heads they are and devi parvati can't answer she says no narad can you tell me and he says no he says ma only one person could tell you that and bhagwan shankar is that person when he returns make sure ma and ask him whose head creates this mala that he wears in that form of nataraj in the form of bhutanath and so narad muni he already stirred up something and he says ma i must leave narai 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 ni leaves kailash and he goes when as he goes devi parvati walks from one end of the parvat to the other and she is waiting for lord shiva to come just like some of the dulahins when they hear something about the husband what has happened are waiting for him to come they cross that door you will see trouble isn't that so and what has happened you started ringing the phone and you walk him from end to end and if you do answer the phone jai bhagwan she walks from end to end and she is waiting for lord shiva nandi is looking but he realizes the devi she is angry she is curious and as she walks from end to end bhagwan shankar enters what takes place with us hara hara mahade ar har har mahade har 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 mahade har 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 mahade bhagwan shankar praise and devi parvati she asks 
Oh Shankar, the mala heads that you wear, whose head are they? And Bhagwan Shankar begins to smile. And you know what he says? He says, Narad was here. Jai Bhagwan. We know people so well sometimes. He says, I'm sure Narad Muni was here. And she says, that is not what I ask you. And do not ask me questions. Tell me whose head are they? And he says, Maya. Jabba Jabba Janama Tum Hari Hoi Kripa Son Shri Yagyana Soi He says, Oh Maya, this head every time, Jabba Jabba Janama Tum Hari, she says, every time that you took birth manifestation upon the earth and you left this earth, Maya, I took that head and created this mala to keep you close to me. And so, Parvati Maya, she is in shock. And she says, Oh Shankar, you doesn't leave this earth. You do not even know what is that. Or have never experienced that. You can't. Because you are Mrityum Jai. But Shankar, why do I have to leave this earth from time to time? Why can't I remain with you and stay with you forever? I am sure that you could make me mortal. And Bhagwan Shankar says, of course, there's a mantra. But no being could hear this mantra. When the ladies want something for those who are married, when the ladies want something, you could jump high, you could jump low, you could say no. But one day to come, she will get it still. Isn't that so? They have a way in getting it. Devi Maya, she is insisting that Bhagwan Shankar, what he does, he takes the trishul and he dashes it to the ground so all of the creatures will leave Kailash. And as they leave Kailash, Parvat, my dear friends, he says, Maya, please sit. And listen to every word of this mantra that I utter, and this will make you immortal. And so she sits there with clasp hands together. Hara 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 Mahadev. Bhagwan Shankar places Devi Maya there and says, Maya, listen to every word of this mantra. With clasp hands, with faith, with love, and with devotion, she is listening to this mantra as Bhagwan Shankar recites his mantra to her. But while he's reciting the mantra, Devi Parvati will say, Ha! Everybody knows what's the meaning of Ha, right? Yes. Yes, are you know? Ha. And why she chants and she's saying, Ha, Ji? All of the creatures leaving Kailash Parvat, there's a part nest nearby. And of the eggs hatched, my dear friends. And while he's chanting his mantra, this parrot is growing. And the parrot begins to listen to what the mantra, the mantra that Lord Shiva is chanting. When we go satsang, what has happened to us sometime? While the Baba reading and you watch your time, Jai Bhagwan, you saw the jupe. What has happened to you? Devi Parvati is listening to the mantra, she begins to feel sleepy. And the Devi sleeps away there. But the parrot has learned her. So why she is sleeping? The parrot is saying, Haji. Bhagwan Shankar is reciting mantra and he is concentrating on what he is saying. And the parrot is reciting Haji. Haji. Bhagwan Shankar, he realizes that something isn't right. And as he looks on the left, he sees Parvati Mata and she's sleeping. But he hears something saying, Haji, Haji. And when he looks above, he sees the parrot nest and he sees the parrot. As he looks up on the tree, the parrot says, Haji. Bhagwan Shankar becomes angry. Why? When a parrot learns something, what the parrot does? Oh, you don't know? Get a parrot and mine it. And let the parrot learn one word. And you will understand what I'm saying. The parrot will continue to repeat it over and over again and again. My dear friends, Bhagwan Shankar is worried 
Because if this parrot leaves Kailash now and this parrot is flying through the universe, what he will do? He will recite the mantra. And he remembers that that of which has taken birth, death is certain unto thee. And if they hear this mantra, they become immortal. So he becomes worried the universe is in risk now. Bhagwan Shankar, he wakes up Devi Parvati and she falls to his feet. She realizes that he is angry. And Bhagwan Shankar, he holds the trishul. He dashes the trishul again to the ground. And as he dashes the trishul, my dear friends and devotees, the parrot flies from the nest. And as the parrot flies from the nest and Lord Shiva is about to capture this parrot, he calls to Devi Maya and he says, O oh Parvati, you have disrespected not only me, but the mantras that were being uttered. And because of your actions, there are consequences. You must now leave Kailash. My dear friends and devotees, for every action, there are consequences. When puja is going on, what we must do? We must sit very quietly. You know, last night we had the consecration of our Hanuman Murti. And while someone was speaking, you could have heard here if a pin dropped on the ground. But there were one set of people a little distant away who was attending the function and they had a different satsang going on. Till eventually they had to send five messages to tell them one satsang at a time. When we go to puja, when we go to satsang, when worship is taking place, you must have respect for it. Isn't that so? Hara Hara Mahadev Om Namah Shivaya When puja is in progress, my dear friends, we must have utmost respect for puja, for the mantras, for their consequences. Likewise, my dear friends, Bhagwan Shankar tells the Parvati Maya Oma, you must now leave Kailash. And as she leaves Kailash, she bows to the feet of Lord Shiva and tears is flowing from her eyes. For those who could remember earlier in Katha, in this very sad Katha, Devi Parvati, her only desire was to worship Lord Shiva and serve Him. Tears began to flow from her eyes. Lord Shiva, my dear friends, He goes after the parrot. And as He goes after the parrot, my dear friends, He is angry. He is in the form of Nataraj. And why as He goes, Devi Parvati is journeying through the forest. Parvati Mata walking through the forest, she meets with Kartike Baba. For those who have joined us with us in our last Bhakti Yatra, we would have learned about the birth of Kartikeya Swami. Kartikeya is called Murgan, he is called Subramanyam. He is the eldest son of Shiva and Parvati. And as she meets with Kartikeya Swami, he bows to the feet of his mother. He says, Ma, why are you roaming the forest? And she begins to explain what took place. Kartike says, Ma, I cannot allow you to stay here. There's one way that you could re retain your spot in Kailash. There's one way to please Lord Shiva. He says, Ma, the reason I cannot allow you to stay here with me, whenever you have a problem, you must never give up and accept that that is life. You must do what? You must stand for your dharma. You must work hard for it. And so, he says, Ma, if you want to win the heart of Lord Shiva, there is only one way you can do that. By worshipping Lord Shiva. By surrendering to the feet of Lord Shiva with love and with devotion and with faith, with vishwas, with confidence. And by chanting the most powerful mantra to Lord Shiva. Anybody knows the most powerful mantra to Lord Shiva? 
इट्स द पंच अक्षर मंत्र द पंच अक्षर मंत्र इज मोर लॉन्गर द नेम ऑफ द मंत्र इज लॉन्गर दैन द मंत्र पर मंत्र हैज फाइव सिलेबल्स ओम द इटर्नल साउंड न म शिवाया ओम नम शिवाया इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल मंत्र टू लॉर्ड शिवा whenever you have a problem who do you turn to you should turn to bhagwan many times when we have problems we turn to our friends they are good friends but then they are friends again sometimes when you tell your friend your problem by the time you reach forest park junction jai bhagwan everybody know your problem isn't that so i see some of you laughing like oh, you have good experience But when you tell Bhagwan your problem, Bhagwan destroys it. To me, wo mata chapita to me wa. To me, wo bhandu chasa kate. God, you are my mother and my father, my friend, my companion, and everything unto me. We declare Bhagwan to be our friend. And when you have your problems, you must go to your best friend, who is who? Bhagwan Shiva. Who is Bhagwan? Shiva Take your problems and pray to the feet of Bhagwan Chant Om Namah Shivaya but not from the lips you know from your heart We can chant all the stroth stotram from our lips And if we don't chant from our hearts my dear friends it has no power in the mantra We must have faith in our prayer. We must have confidence. This is what Kartikeya Swami is telling to Parvati Ma. I always say this: We as Hindus, my dear friends, sometimes lack the most faith. We just say, "Baba, go try and see if it will work, na." Give me the mantra. Let me see if it will work. And that's what we just do. From the time you talk like that, you know what happened? Jai Bhagwan all mantra done We must have faith Baba I know this mantra is going to work I know this mantra is going to be make me successful We must have faith and confidence my dear friends in our prayer Devi Parvati she goes by a beautiful stream and she is preparing for her devotion When one is preparing for devotion my dear friends and devotees We must firstly purify our body, our minds, and our hearts. Isn't that so? This is why we will fast and so forth. Devi Maya she gathers the herbs, the herdi, the saffron, which represents purity. She begins to rub it in her skin, and as she is rubbing the herbs on her skin for purification, together with the dirt, the muck from her skin, and the excess herbs, they are falling to the ground. She's thinking to herself When I go to perform devotion to Lord Shiva I do not want anyone to disturb me If I only had a child if I only had someone here to ensure that no one disturbs me it would have been a great blessing And as the herbs fall to the ground and the dirt from my skin she gathers it together She begins to mold a doll as she holds it in her hand. And as she holds it in her hand, my dear friends, she's praying. Who is she praying to? And what she's praying for? Katha tells to us this evening. Devi Maya, she holds this doll as she begins to pray. Bhagwan, you are called by many different forms. You are called Rama. You are called Vishnu. You are called by various names. You are visualized by many different forms, O Prabhu. Today, O Bhagwan Hari, you are Jagat Pita, the Universal Father. Lord, by your grace and your blessing, Prabhu, by the blessing of this water that flows here, there is Shakti, there is power within this water. And we as Hindus know this, right? Even in the water has power we believe that Ganga Mata Varun Devta reside within the water and she says i have faith that you are going to instill life into the stone 
How many of us have that amount of faith in God? Hmm? She says, I have faith in you, O Bhagwan. And she holds it down. And she dips it into the water. And as she dips it into the water, my dear friends and devotees, she raises it. Om Namo Narayanaya Namaha. She dips it again. Om Pranaya Namaha. Om Apranaya Namaha. Om Vyanaya Namaha. Om Samanaya Namaha. Om Udhanaya Namaha. She calls upon the various elements to instill life. For his body is created by the elements. And so she invites the presence of the elements into the storm. And as she holds it, she begins to pray to Lord Vishnu. Om Namo Narayanaya Namaha. Om Namo Narayanaya Namaha. Om Shantakaram Bhujagashainam Padamanabam Sudesham. Vishwaharam Gagana Sadesham Megavaranam Subhangam She prays to Lord Vishnu And as she prays from her heart She feels this doll moving in her hands And as she opens her eyes It is a child The power of prayer my dear friends When you have faith in your prayer and your dharma even the impossible becomes possible. Believe it or not. Even the impossible becomes possible when you have faith in your prayer. And when you have faith in God, my dear friends. And so, she embraces his child. And as she hugs him, she tells to this child, Your name is Hiramba. A mother's beloved child. She says to his child as he grows in age, I am going to perform the pasya to your father. And I want you to stay at the entrance of this cave whilst I pray. She gives him a dhanda. Everybody knows a dhanda? A stick. And she gives it to him and she says, This will be your weapon. Stay at the very entrance of this cave. And he stays there with the dhanda. While she goes into the cave, she creates a beautiful prithivi linga. Shiv Puran teaches us, whenever we have problems, especially in the age of Kali Yuga, we perform puja and worship to that prithivi linga, the linga that is made out of dirt. And special puja and worship is done for maximum success and blessing. And so she begins to pray, Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. She surrenders to the feet of Lord Shiva. This child is walking from one end to the other of the cave. And while he's walking, my dear devotees and bhaktas, Devi Maya is praying. Her devotion becomes more and more intense. Parvati Mata is known as Mahashakti. She is the energy of the universe. Uh, as she prays, my dear friends and devotees, the Kundalini begins to activate. That energy is activated, my dear friends. The aura of the Devi begins to shine very bright. That, that entire cave begins to glow. And as that energy is being awakened, the earth begins to shake. Why is that earth is shaking, my dear friends and devotees? The devotees become worried. The devotees, where they hurry to Indra Dev, the Lord of the Devas, and they say, My Lord, please help us. Parvati Mata is performing a very severe penance and tapasya devotion to Lord Shiva. And that Shakti is about to manifest upon the earth, but this earth cannot bear the weight of that power, that energy. Shiva must stop her. All the devas went to Kailash Parvat. And upon reaching to Kailash Parvat, they fell to the feet of Lord Shiva. Falling on the feet of Lord Shiva, what takes place? Kathatya's was. The devas, my dear friends, 
surrendering to the feet of Lord Shiva and praying their pranams. Bhagwan Shankar is asking today, what has brought you to Kailash? He says, Devi is performing severe tapasya to you and that energy is being awakened. But this earth cannot bear the weight of that Shakti. She could bring great destruction to this universe. So powerful is that Divine Mother, my dear friends. And so, Indradev says, Shankar, you are the only one whom could stop her from that tapasya. You are the only one to stop her from that great tapasya and to bring closure to that devotion. Bhagwan Shankar is smiles. And as he leaves Kailash Paravadini is walking, he meets with Kartikeya Swami. And Kartikeya he bows to the feet of Lord Shiva. Pranam Pita. And Lord Shiva asks, Have you seen your mother? Have you seen Parvati Devi? And he says, ah, She's performing tapasya to you somewhere in this forest. And Lord Shiva is walking. He doesn't know where he is going. But my dear friends and devotees, Wherever there is good energy and positive energy, you will always be attracted. When someone has a good aura, what happens? You know, sometimes you see somebody for the first time, and you say, boy, my blood will take that person. Isn't that so? You know why? Because the aura of the person is beautiful. And because the aura of the person is positive, my dear devotees, you are attracted to that person, the awe of that person. And sometimes again, you see somebody and Jai Bhagwan, the person that doing nothing and Hara Hara Mahadev. That's when the aura is dark, my dear friends. Likewise, there are places that you go and when you reach, you feel like though you are at home, you have been here before because the aura, the energy is correct and right. And sometimes you go somewhere and Jai Bhagwan, you want to go back home. My dear friends, this is the energy, the aura of that Devi is so powerful that Lord Shiva, he sees this cave glowing and he knows the Devi is there. And as he goes closer to the cave, what takes place? The Devas are glorifying Lord Shiva and they are worshipping him. Shankar, as he reaches to the entrance of the cave, he knows the Devi is within that cave. And as he's going to enter into the cave, this Dhanda comes across the cave. He pauses. He looks to the side. He sees his little fat boy. He says, Why you allow me to enter into this cave? My wife is performing devotion, tapasya. And this little boy, he begins to laugh. He says, that is my mother who is performing tapasya devotion there. And she says, nobody is allowed to enter into this cave, so stay outside. Jai Bhagwan. Bhagwan Shankar, he says, your mother, please step aside and allow me to enter into the cave. And so, Ganapati, this devta, he holds the danda and he puts it again over the uh, doorway, the entrance. And he says, the only way you are going to enter is if you battle with me. For I am placed here to do a duty and I am doing just that. She says, no one and you could be who you have to stay outside. Whenever we are given duties, my dear friends, what you must do? Perform your duty. Perform your duty to the best of your ability, my dear friends. This is what our dharma teaches us. Your duties, perform it to the best of your ability. What are our duties as human beings? What are our duties as children of the rishis and the munis? To serve God, my dear friends. Our duty upon this earth is to burn the karma that have sent brought us here. And how do we do that? By serving Bhagwan. And how do we serve God? Through our puja through our rituals but not every day might be able to perform puja or a ritual then how are you going to serve God? 
How are you going to serve God? Because of our lifestyle, sometimes we are unable to do puja every day. It is said, service to humanity is service to God. Every time you get the opportunity to help somebody, grasp that opportunity and do it with love and devotion and serve God. Perform your duty, my dear friends, just like Ganapati Baba. And so, this child begins to battle with Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva holds the Trishu and he commands his Trishu to go towards his child. What takes place? Lord Shiva commands the Trishu to go before this child and the Trishu takes off the head of this child but because of the power and the energy of that Trishu the head pitched to the northern direction your jhana is away the child falls to the ground and Bhagwan Shankar enters into the cave as he enters into the cave my dear friends and devotees Devi Parvati is praying, but she could feel the presence of someone. When you are praying, if someone is standing there and looking at you, you could feel that person's presence. Isn't that so? And when you open the eye, you see the neighbor looking for something. Jai Bhagwan. But sometimes you open your eye and you see nobody. You know who is that? Bhagwan. Bhagwan is there. So no need to open your eye. Have faith that it is God. But Devi Parvati, she knows that she is there alone. She hears the Gunguru makes a noise. She knows Lord Shiva is here. She hears the Damaru Nak. She knows it's Bodhinath. She gently opens her eyes. And as she sees Lord Shiva, she falls his lotus like me. Tears flowing from her eyes, she begins to wash the feet of Lord Shiva. And she begins to beg, Maaf karo Prabhu, Maaf karo. Please forgive me, O Bhagwan. If I have made a mistake. And while she is begging for forgiveness, Lord Shiva holds Parvati Devi and embraces her. But Parvati Maya, she sees blood coming into the, uh, uh, the cave and while the blood is coming into the cave Devi Parvati she says Bodhinath how did you enter? and he begins to laugh he says there's a little child claiming to be your son and he was trying to block me so don't worry I destroyed him the very Parvati who was ever so loving and caring and the one who is asking for forgiveness, she pulls back as it. She begins to turn red in color. Her hair begins to grow. Her eyebrows begin to go up. You know when someone is angry, what happens to the eyebrow? Nowadays, you don't know some people are angry and destroy it like that. Jai Bhagwan. Her eyebrow begins to go up and her eyes begin to get red. And the Devi, she holds the very Trishul. And as she holds the Trishul, the entire cave begins to shake. And as the cave begins to shake, all the deutas who are guarded outside, they know that something is taking place. They know that that is the energy, the Shakti of Durga. And they begin to pray to her, Ma, Shanti Karu. They are praying. But the Devi, she commands Lord Shiva. But the Devtas begin to pray because they can hear the Devi bawling from inside of that cave. They can hear the roar of that Devi. How powerful that roar is. They begin to worry. They begin to pray. Jai Durge. Jai Jai Durge. The Devi, she tells to Lord Shiva, O Shankar, I want you to go. And you must instill life back into that child by whatever means it may be. And she walks out of the cave. And as she's walking out of the cave, she drags the trishul on the ground and she's going outside. She sees that child on the ground lying there like any other mother. When you see your children in hurt, in pain, much as if you see your son lying there, your child with blood oozing out of his body, what pain it brings to your heart. She begins to bawl and the devas begin to pray. 
to the Divine Mother, we offer salutations to her lotus like feet. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Purgaru Pina Samsita Namasta Se Namasta Se Namasta Se Namo Nama Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shakti Ru Pina Samsita Namasta Se Namasta Se Namasta Se Namo Nama Jai Durge, Jai Jai Durge, Jai Durge, Jagadambe Durga Kali Ma, Jai Jai Jagadamba Tu Shiravari Ma, Ma Jai Ma, Ma Durga Ma, Ma Durga Ma, Ma Amba Ma. My dear friends and devotees, Devi Maya, she stands there. Tears flowing from her eyes, she holds his body in her hand. And Lord Shiva, he commands his dutas to go in search of the first being that they see, the first creature to bring back that head. And as they are journeying, they are not seeing anything there in the forest. They go back to Lord Shiva and he says, go to the northern direction. And was their journey, Devi Parvati, she tells to Shiva, if you take off someone's head to bring and put back life into my child, then what happens to that being, that Kritya? Bhagavan Shankar says, do not worry. For that person will now be serving and that person's life, that person's Atma, the Atma of that creature, whatever it may be, would attain Mukti or liberation. And so, the Dutta saw an elephant, a little calf, bringing back that head. Brahmaji stands on one end, Lord Shiva on the other, and Bhagwan Sri Vishnu. The child is in the middle. Light begins to emanate from the third eye of each. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva creating a triangle, a yantra trapping that beautiful energy as they begin to utter the wonderful mantras holding that head they are about to place it back upon the body whilst holding that head they are praying placing that head upon the body my dear friends and devotees and bhaktas the child begins to move as life has been instilled back upon the very body of this child. And once, my dear friends and devotees, Devi Parvati sits there. She embraces this child. She begins to cry and she holds him very near and dear to her heart. And Bhagwan Shankar, he explained to all of the devas gathered there together that he has to have an input into the child, this very child, the life of this child. And now he has become the father of this child. And so he says to this child from today onwards, you'll be known as Ganapati, the Lord of the Ganas. You'll be the chief commander of my army. You'll be known as Shivananda, the child, the son of Bhagwan Shankar. And so Ganapati, Ganesha, he is Pratam Deva Puja. Indra Dev says, from today you will be known as Pratam Dev Puja. The remover of all obstacles. The first one to be worshipped in every undertaking in life. Before we do anything, we must say, Om Sri Ganesha Inama. Om Gam Ganapate Nama. Receive the blessing of Lord Ganesh to remove your obstacles in life. And so, Yama Devi takes the noose, the rope, and he says, Oh Ganesh, this rope, you will keep it with you. And when your devotees come before you, you will pull them closer to their goals in life. He's given the parashu, the axe, to cut the attachment of this Mahamaya, of the lives of his devotees. This Ganesh is sitting there. He's given the parma, the lotus, 
which symbolizes love. Despite he has an elephant head and he has a huge stomach and a huge body, a human body, he is all loving. And so this Ganesh sits there so beautifully. Devi Parvati embraces him. Lord Shiva sits on the other side and all of the Devas, they begin to glorify this Ganesh. Bhagwan Shankar together with Devi Parvati, Ganesh Bhava and all of the Devutas, they return to Kailash Parvat. Why they sit on Kailash Parva, Devi, Parvati, Lord Shiva, Ganapati Baba now in the middle and Kartikeya Swami Nandishwara comes and he sits there. And why he sits there beautifully, my dear friends and devotees? Lord Ganesh sits there with the elephant trunk, big ears, a huge stomach. Everyone is seen there with a normal head and a normal body. But this Ganesh has an elephant head and a human body. With four arms, what does it represent? In our next Bhakti Yatra, we'll understand the representations of Lord Ganesh, the symbols of Lord Ganesh. We'll understand the power of Lord Ganesh. And that takes us into our next Bhakti Yatra. Ek bar bore satya sanat dharma ki.